Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the freshwater tidal marshes of the Potomac River, specifically only a couple miles downstream of Washington, D.C. So I was looking on Instagram. I saw all those cool, you know, tide pool 11 species on the West Coast. I was like, I want that. But that is really, really, really far away. So why not just improvise and do our own that on the East Coast? And that is the freshwater marshes of the Potomac. There's some quite unique species here, not like endemic species, but still, you know, marsh loving freshwater species that we can go after. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna be navigating the absolute hornet's nest of a nemesis here, and that is the beaver. There are a ton of beavers here, and they aren't all too happy with me being here either because they're splashing their tails a lot. So we're gonna have to keep our eyes up for that. Hey, Mr. Beaver. Hello. Okay, gone. Okay, goodbye. I'm seeing a bunch of little silver sides. Might try and catch one of those. All right, so the silver sides are being stubborn as all get out. So I'm going to catch one of these. Oh my gosh, dude. The coalition has not had this species yet. Oh, where'd it go? Wait, where'd it go? I lost it. Here it is. I found it. I found it. Look at that thing, dude. He's so colorful. Oh my gosh. Got him. Got him. Oh gosh. Almost slipped. <laughs> I got him though. All right, so there's our absolute stud of a mama trog. Like peak spawning coloration right here. I haven't I've never seen that like that speckled pattern in the dorsal fin before. That is awesome, dude. Uh but mama trog is a glonquin for going in schools because you can commonly find the species in marshes and just massive, massive schools, especially around brackish areas. Let me show y'all another species of killifish around here that looks very similar, and a lot of people get them confused with this. All right, leaving that little killifish in his puddle right there and try and catch the other one that's look like that one so we can compare them side by side. There's two of them right here. Let's see if we can get one of these to bite. Oh, spooky, how about you? Dude, I can feel the strike on that one. <laughs> Intense. All right, so there's our banded killifish, Fundulus diaphanus, next to our mummachog. Now, from distance, these might look kind of similar. And mama chogs, when they're not this colorful, they do get little bars on them, uh, kind of like the bars on these, but how can you tell the two species apart? Well, as you can see here, one of them has a rounded caudal fin and the other has a square caudal fin, AKA truncate. And yeah, banded killifish always have that truncate caudal fin and mama chogs always have that rounded caudal fin. But uh, these are two studly males. I don't know why, but every banded killifish I get here, they always come out really, really blue underneath the camera and just, in general like that, that they, they get some really awesome spawning colors here for some reason but uh just two beautiful fish you're gonna let yourself go okay yeah also the snout on this species is a lot uh more pointy than the mama chog anyways let's try and find a female so we can compare male and female these two okay ah! 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 Well, so that ginormous, probably like PB banded killifish for me got away. Um, that was a female. Females can be told apart from males because females have very narrow black bars on them where males have wider blue bars on them. These ones always chase the big ones with the narrow stripes. So this is definitely a male and the other one is definitely a female. So say a sign to this little buddy. We are definitely running out of short here. As you can see, high tide is coming in and it's coming in hot. And the time it took me to catch those two banded killifish our little uh, containment pool there has gone underwater. So we gotta hurry up, find these species. Bro, this is like the banded killifish honey hole. There's like a dozen of them chilling in here. But uh, we're gonna try and catch one of these silver sides. Oh yeah, I see why. There's like a log blocking all the waves coming in. Nice and calm here. Ah! Got a silver side, got a silver side, heck yeah. Third ever Indoland silver side right there. Dude, it's probably my biggest one ever too. Oh, by far, it's my biggest one. PB. So this is our inland silver side, Manidia beryliana, <laughs> something, something like that. But uh, yeah, that is my new PB inland silver side. Um, recently, this species was split from, what was it? The Mississippi drainage silver sides, which are now Mississippi silver sides. And this has gone back and forth a couple times now. So like the species is having people play hot potato with it, but uh. Yeah, that is an inland silver side. Very easy to tell apart from an Atlantic silver side because Atlantic silver sides, they don't really have this yellow hue to them. And Atlantic silver sides, they also have over 20 anal fin rays or yeah, anal fin rays. Whereas this one has less than 20. There we go. You can count them right there if you want to. Less than 20, I'm sure. So yeah, inland silver side. Going back. Bye, have a great time. 
Well, all right, we've only been here like 40 minutes and we've caught pretty much everything I expect to see here. But there's still one fish missing and that's this one right here that we'll try and catch. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Got him. Darter time. <laughs> well, I know what y'all are thinking. Hunter, darters in tidal water? No way, darters do not live in tidal areas. Well, over here they do. At least one of them does, and that is the Tesla darter. <laughs> oh, he just ran off on me. Ethiosma homesteady atromaculatum, the lowland tessellated darter. Um, it has a name implies lowland. This species does live in tidal waters. There's something weird going on the bank over there. What the heck was that? But yeah, this species does occur in tidal areas and it will occur here in vast, vast abundance. Like it, at one time when I first got, when I first like fished this place, I found tessellated darters to be the most abundant species here right behind inland silversides. And if you want to learn more about the fascinating reproductive strategy of the species you can check out this video here where i caught a very very colorful male but uh yeah we're gonna keep looking around the peninsula here and see if we can't find anything new all we need to do now is find ourselves a little juvenile snakehead and we'll be in business that is a massive garfish i don't know why the camera is not focusing right now but that thing is big uh also these are indeed blueback herring i, I saw a couple swimming around i think they're blueback so they could also be um what was it like, owl wives I don't know. There's, there's some kind of river herring. All right, so we've reached the end of the boardwalk on the gravel mine marsh here. It used to be a gravel mine. Now it's converted into a restoration area for wildlife, I guess. And trust me, they got some fine gravel here. But um, you can see her all the way right there. It's pretty nice, huh? But anyways, at the end here, you can see National Harbor down that direction. Come on. Yeah, with the big old Ferris wheel. We filmed one video there once. And over there, you can see the Wood Wilson Bridge. I'm planning on filming a video there. So of course, Washington DC is over there where that giant glowing massive light is in the horizon. That's the city of Washington DC. And Ronald Reagan National Airport, if you remember that from some videos, is down that way. And you can see the, all the, the airplanes lining up to land at the airport. So that's the first one in line in front there. Then, you know, the second one and the third one and all that stuff. <laughs> There's a whole line of them over there. Anyways, that's pretty neat. Let's, uh, let's head out and do the outro. Today, Today has been a very interesting day for me. I started off playing frisbee golf. I, I might have almost hit some people. And then I went fishing for shad. I wound up catching a new species, an owlwife. I don't know what, I think it's like species number 285 or something. Um, I wasn't recording, obviously. I was just doing it for fun. And then I came here and found pretty much everything we were looking for in the marshes in like the first 15 minutes. I mean, there's just so many species all over the place. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, video's going out from here. I think I might do a little saltwater fishing trip to the Chesapeake. Maybe a couple more freshwater videos. And then uh, we'll head back down to Blacksburg, Southwest Virginia, and do probably, a, I don't know, maybe about a dozen videos down there. And then who knows where else we'll move to after that. So thank you all for watching. I'll catch you next time.